So we're now talking about what men want in the mating strategies when they look at women. So you're saying small waist to hip ratio. Right. Is how much of that is our deep biological past on top of which we can build all kinds of different standards of beauty. So, you know, we have many things going on in our brain. Um, our value of other humans in selecting a mate might uh, incorporate a lot more variables as we get into the 21st century. So how quickly does our um, valuation of a mate uh, evolve relative to the evolution of um, the human species? They're using evolve in the sense of culturally evolve? Culturally evolve, uh, uh, and then relative to biologically evolve. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I think that there are, um, there are some things that are biologically evolved, some standards, standards of attractiveness. Um, and there are some of the things that I mentioned. So in male evaluation of females, let me back up and just say, what is the underlying logic? Why would we have standards of attractiveness? So um, it, 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 here's the interesting thing, and this gets back to your earlier question about what is um, unique to humans or, or what distinguishes us or what set us off on the path that we did, is um, chimpanzee males do not have any difficulty figuring out when a female is fertile. She signals that like crazy with the bright red genital swell, uh, swelling, uh, olfactory cues, she goes into estrus. In humans, we have, and this was actually a third thing that I wanted to add earlier, we have concealed ovulation, okay, relatively concealed ovulation, which is remarkable given how close we are primatologically to, to chimpanzees. Uh, and so um, uh, there's, there's a little bit of evidence that there are subtle changes that occur when women ovulate, non women not on hormonal contraceptives. But it's mostly concealed. But it is it is largely concealed. Do you think so, that's a feature of a bug in uh like do we evolve that is that a is that a a cool <laughs> a powerful invention for the human species? I, I think it's it's an adaptation in women that women have evolved concealed ovulation. Uh and I think it's a feature, not a bug. Uh, yeah, it gives more would it give more power for women to select uh, a mate? There are a couple different hypotheses about it, but the one that I think is most plausible uh, is that, you know, if again, comparing it to chimps, FEMA goes into estrus. The male just has to try to monopolize her while she's in that estrus phase, and then they basically ignore the females after that. If you can't know when a, when a woman is fertile, then you have to stick around a lot longer. And so I think long-term pair bonding co-evolved with concealed ovulation. Uh, and with that, also a, a very different form of sexuality, which is that we have sex throughout the, uh, the ovulatory cycle, um, and uh, chimps don't. You know, there's there's a little bit of mating, a little bit of sex toward the edges of the um, estrus cycle, but but very little. So that that actually makes mating a more fundamental part of um, interaction between humans than it does for chimps. So me meaning like year round, every day, we're constantly <laughs> selecting mates in terms of biologically speaking. So what what else what what else do men want Ver okay. today uh in the 21st century versus in, in the caveman days? A wonderful question. To answer it, though, I have to distinguish between long-term mating and short-term mating. Uh, and in long-term mating, it gets very complicated. So as, as a... Uh, uh, <laughs> That's one way to put it, yeah. Uh, uh, well, well so, so I teach a course in, in human sexuality at, at University of Texas at Austin. And um, one of the things, this was back in the days when there were chalkboards and, and, you, and you taught with a piece of chalk and wrote things on the board. Um, and what I would do is I would ask the class, I'd teach this a large class, one to 200. I'd say, what do women want? Tell me what, all the things women want in a long-term mate. Mm -hmm. And so I would start at one end of the blackboard. There were like five blackboards. And they'd say, well, I want a mate who's 
who's kind, who's understanding, who's intelligent, who's healthy, who's got a good sense of humor, who shares my values. And, and I just go, and I fill out five blackboards and then run out of space. Mm -hmm. and, and so you, uh, first, it's a large number of characteristics that people want, and then specific magnitudes of those characteristics or, or amounts. So I say, you, you want a maid who's, say, generous with mm -hmm. their resources. And they say, yes, I want maids who's generous with their resources. So I said, so like a guy who, and this is a women's maid selection, a guy who at the end of every month gets his paycheck and gives it to the uh, local wino um, on, on the drag. And I said, well, no, not that generous. Yeah. Okay, generous toward me, <laughs> right. not not indiscriminately generous. And so you want a maid who's um, ambitious, you know, who's a, a hard worker. Yes, but but not a workaholic, you know. And so uh, and, and so then you get to interactions among different characteristics. So there's um, a lot of characteristics, a lot of variables in this very complex optimization problem for women. Yes, that's right. And more so for women than for men. So and then, when then I turn to the men and I say, well, what do men want? And then I, I run out of space after about a blackboard and a half because yeah. they, they can't think of anything else. Uh, so the women- think I think there's a lot of explanations for that. <laughs> Besides the, the lack of the number of variables, it's also, you know, um, <laughs> I mean, it's, that's interesting. So what, what's the difference between the variables? So on the men's side, what are the variables? Well, there, in long-term mate selection, there, there's a lot of overlap. Sure. Okay. Um, so things like intelligence, um, good health, sense of humor, um, a, an agreeable personality, someone who's not too neurotic or moody or, or emotionally volatile. Uh, but there are key differences as well. And the differences stem from, they basically fall on the delimited number of domains. So for men, it's physical attractiveness, physical appearance, and youth are the two real big ones, okay? Men prioritize those more than women do. And so that's why you have phenomena such as uh, this, uh, quote, lo love at first sight, where sometimes men can walk into a party and they see a woman across the room and they say, that, I'm gonna marry that woman, that's the woman for me. Women very rarely do that. Now, most men do, don't do that either, but men are much more inclined to fall in love at first sight. That's because they prioritize physical appearance. Why? Because physical appearance provides that this wealth of information about a woman's fertility status. And this is from, from an evolutionary perspective, from a purely reproductive perspective, in, in a business school, they would call it job one. Job one is you have to select a fertile mate. So those who, in our evolutionary past, who selected infertile mates, so postmenopausal women, for example, um, did not become our ancestors. So we are all the descendants of this long and unbroken chain of ancestors who all of whom su su succeeded in selecting a fertile mate. But fertility cannot be observed directly. Uh, it can use some cues. Ex exactly, and, th and there are cues that are probabilistically related to this underlying quality of fertility that we can't observe directly. And we're doing that computation in our heads. What about men? What do men want for short-term mating? Well, so for short-term mating, um, for both sexes, uh, physical appearance uh, looms very large. So, so, in, so women are no physical attractiveness and appearance. They're important for women in long-term mate selection. So, I don't want to um, mislead anyone on that. They're just not as important as they are for men. Um, and so, a lot of characteristics come for women before physical appearance, physical attractiveness.